Hello and thank you for joining us for another week of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Schein. I'm Matt Finkel and Mark, a couple league games happened this past weekend. Let's get right to it, breaking them down. Begin with the Blanchard Valley Conference. Liberty Benton winners, Corey Rossen knocks off PG, Arlington over Arcadia. What do you take away from these league victories? I thought the interesting game out of all that, and there were good basketball games all the way around, was what happened with Liberty Benton because they trailed Lipsick at halftime had a huge second half, put like extra 12 points on the board. They came back and won on the road at Lipstick. That was a really nice win for Liberty Benton. We had a chance to see them Saturday night against OG. That's a good basketball team at Liberty Benton right now. OG getting the win on Saturday, but LB 1-0 now in the league. And what about Arlington over Arcadia? Impressed with the Red Devils or too early to tell? Well, I, th I think first of all, they put a lot of points on the board against Arcadia. They doubled them up 66-33. Good balance, Spire with 21, Durlat with 15, Glick with 18. Good balance, as you would expect from a, from a team up at Arlington and Coach Vermillion's team. So I, I think they're going to play well throughout the course of the season. They have a big game this week, too. Who do they play this week? They have uh, Lipsick this week. And, of course, Lipsick with a league loss now. And then Arlington has on Saturday night has Columbus Grove, who had a win against Bath last week. So a good weekend coming up for Arlington Red Devils. As we get into these league games, you're going to have those weekends where you have a tough league oh, yeah. game and then a tough non-conference game Saturday. And, that, and this is when the grind of the season really picks up. All right, how about in the MAC, Mark? Because they had their one league game opener. Yeah. It was Versailles over New Bremen 60-41. to 41. Well, obviously we have to kind of talk about why is Versailles playing and nobody else is. And the reason is they start their tournament earlier than everybody else down in the southwestern part of the state. So Versailles has to play one league game before everybody else does. This year it was New Bremen. New Bremen is struggling this year, having trouble putting points on the board. Uh, in their, their four recent games, they're only scoring about 41 points per game in their last three losses. But uh, Versailles, they can score. Uh, Arns is scoring, picked up kind of where his brother picked up off. He went to uh, Michigan State. He's scoring a lot of points for him. They're getting points out of McElhaney. They get some three-point shooting as well. Good win for Versailles to start league playoff. The rest of the MAC games will kick off this week. Right. How about the Northwest Central Conference? Another just one league game. Yeah. Lehman Catholic over Harden Northern. Right. Same situation. Uh, Sydney Lehman, of course, has to go and play early because of how their schedule plays down in the southern part of the state. So they had to play early. Good win with Harden Northern. It's a Harden Northern team that's still very, very young. They were young a year ago. A lot of those guys are back, but still juniors this year as opposed to being seniors. And so it's a good win for Lehman Catholic. And that Harden Northern program definitely trending in the right direction, though, which is exciting to see. Yeah, they've got good size inside. They've got a good post player who can score when you get into basketball inside. They were trying to work the ball around to do that. Once they got behind, Lehman was able to kind of stretch it out for them, get a 16-point win, 18-point win. Final slate of league games from this past weekend came in the Shelby County Athletic League. Fairlawn beat Anna by three, close game, 51-48. Right. You had Jackson Center over Houston by two, and then Botkins over Lormy by 14. Lormy's one and two now. That's a little bit of a surprise to have Lormy just be one and two right now. Of course, they were one of the, the trendy picks at the beginning of the season to go with that. What's interesting is Rushi's one and oh. Jackson Center's undefeated in conference play, and everybody else has at least one loss. Already. It's a, it's a really, really balanced conference, yeah, already. And of course, we're talking about Jackson Center now perhaps being the favorite. They might have been all along, but with Army having a loss already, Rushi's going to hang in there. They graduated those 10 seniors. They're hanging in there right now, but it's very early, of course. And they play everybody in a double round, so everybody gets to match up twice with each other. But already, everybody with one loss except two teams. That's the big difference with that league in that they play each other twice. And, you know, teams could be so different a couple months Oh, into absolutely. the season than they are and, when they first met each other. And of course, the one thing is you go on the road yeah. and you get blown out and you come and home you come and get home. the same team and you get a chance to even them up at home, which I like. I, that's a great way to be able to schedule it. And they've got a, enough teams in their conference they can do that and not over schedule themselves. I, I like what they can do in their conference. So a little bit of taste of league <laughs> action and we'll have our full slate next week. Looking forward to that. Right. Now, at this point in the season, we've got a handful of teams that are unbeaten. Who's the most impressive to you? Let me just rattle off some okay. of these teams. We've got Spencerville 3-0, OG, Crestview, they're both 3-0, Ayersville's 4-0, Versailles is 3-0, we just talked about, Perry's 3-0, LCC's 4-0, Lincoln View's 3-0. Yeah. Who are you impressed with? Well, I think, first of all, we can kind of run down a whole list to make a case for each one of those teams being very good right now and doing what they're doing in the middle of December. Let's start with Spencerville. You know, they, they've got those wins at Mason Nurse averaging 18.7. Dakota Pritchard's averaging uh, 16.7. They have nine three-point field goals between the two of them. They're, they're carrying their basketball team, waiting, of course, for Golke to get healthy. And I think once they do, just imagine how good their team's going to be because they're playing very, very well. They have a huge game this week. Oh, you mentioned that Lincoln View's 3-0. They have a good inside game, good perimeter guard play as well. 
and they're, they're playing well. And both those teams are undefeated. They play at Lincoln View on Friday night. A really interesting matchup to start out Northwest Conference yeah, play. What a great way to open up the yep. league. And then we talked about LCC a bunch. You know, right. they're hanging tough, 4 0. They're going to be very difficult to beat. And then Crestview. 3 0. That's a good start for the a, Knights. A bit of a surprise. Connor Watsonizer is carrying them offensively. He does so much for them. He can score the three, take the ball to the basket. He's a very, very good offensive player. And they have a freshman class, which is outstanding. I know Etzler's playing some. There's a prediction that by the end of the season that they'll have three freshmen playing with them on a somewhat regular basis in their rotation because their freshman class is outstanding. So, yeah, Crestview playing very, very well. And if you're going to play for Coach Best, you're going to play defense. So they hang their hat on that, and that keeps them in the game until they can find some scoring. Just two years removed from the state title and maybe destined for another in the coming years. We'll wait yeah. and see. And, and you know, Matt, as long as we're putting this whole list together, you know, OG and Perry both. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen OG now. They're very talented. Uh, I, I like what they can do. They can score. Uh, they they kind of controlled the game against Liberty Benton, uh, uh, and Liberty Benton, of course, lost by five. Uh, it was just a five-point game throughout much of the basketball game. And if this sounds like criticism officiating, I don't mean it that way, but Liberty Benton never got a call. Mm -hmm. All the 50-50 calls went towards Ottawa. Some Grand games North. are just like that, that, that right? That's right. Yeah. That, that's, that's not criticism of officiating. And yet Liberty Benton hung around and, and just lost by, by five. But they got perimeter scoring. They got two big sophomore post players they bring in off the bench. I like what's going on there. And, Talk about Perry, you can talk about how great their guard play is with Jacoby Lane Harvey and Plummy Gardner. They get a lot of points out of them. They get up and down the floor very well. So we have some teams right now that are playing very well in the middle of December. Excited to watch Perry throughout the rest of the way. And how about OG just graduating Noah Bramwich, the yep. leading scorer, and we were thinking maybe it's a down year. They haven't given us any reason to think that uh, just yet. Tremendous balance. You know, they're undefeated. Now they have an interesting weekend because they have Bath on the road this weekend, and then they play at Lima Central Catholic uh, on, on Saturday night. A which game that seems like they meet every year in the postseason, but it won't happen this That's year correct. because they're in different divisions. So this is our this is our LCC OG matchup. We better right. savor it. Yeah, because OG has gone up to Division Two. The Thunderbirds have stayed in Division Three, so they can't play in the tournament this year. This is the matchup, and it will be uh, at uh, LCC on Saturday night. All right, time for a play breakdown, one of my favorite okay. parts of the show. And a great game this weekend between two teams off to pretty good starts, Wayne Trace and Paulding. And this game goes to overtime. Wayne Trace was leading by 11 with four minutes to go. Here they're up seven. Show us how Paulding came back. Yeah, we're right at the, that seven point mark here. And you can see, first of all, we're gonna get, you think, well, they should be putting the ball in the deep freeze about right now. Well, that's no, too early. It's four minutes to go in the game, just a seven point lead. But here you can see the long rebound that comes out and you're gonna watch the spot up jump shot in the corner right here. The defense hasn't reacted yet to him. Two players are trapping out here. So this opens up this perimeter jump shot. So we bang a three ball out of the corner. And of course, what a dangerous weapon that is and how that can change a basketball game. Now we're down to, to a four point lead. This shot goes up, scramble for the rebound, kick around. Here's Linder in the corner. You're thinking he's gonna bury this. Nope, he doesn't make it that time. Here's the rebound and the transition basket. Nobody picks up the basketball and uh, Edwards is able to skate right to the basket and again, uh, cut the lead down. And then the final play that we're gonna show right here, this is a game that's gonna actually put it to overtime, even though there's about a minute left in the play. The trap out front, and get a little bit careless with the basketball, a little soft pass, a nice uh, play by Erlano to get the steal and then go to the rim and score. And we're gonna have a chance to watch it again because you can see the official counted the play. And let's, let's talk about how this whole thing took place and why the basket counts as we get to see a little bit of celebration here. But right here, here's the defender right here. He's got a guy he's locked up on the trap's gonna come out front. And watch how far he goes to get his steal, get his hand in the passing lane. Right here, here comes the soft pass. He gets out and gets a handle in the passing lane. And then off to the basket he goes. And the question is, are we gonna count the field goal or not? And if you watch right about here, the rule book says, if you are gathering yourself to get a shot when the, the foul occurs, you count the basket. You can see he's got the ball. He's trying to get it to the rim, even though he's a long way out on the floor. Basket counts. He goes to the free throw line. We end up in overtime. So a good call by the official. Call it just exactly the way the real book is supposed to read. And obviously a good defensive play in a basket as well. Great energy at the jungle for that game. And they got the win 70-64 did Paulding. So now Paulding with one loss, their loss to Defiance. Wayne Trace with one loss coming to Paulding. Both those teams are gonna be very, pretty good. Yeah, they really are. I think obviously Corbin Linder is one of the best players in our area and he's got good people Ethan, around him. Ethan, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Corbin's a graduate. All right. My fault. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Ethan, he's a great player. He's a tall, long arm point guard who can do a lot of things, can score, distribute and so on. 
But I like Sean Brewer's team. You know, if you look at their schedule and who they played, they could be 0-4. Yeah. Because they played some really, really good people earlier, 3-1 and with a loss to Defiance. All right, let's talk about teams that have gotten off to unenviable starts, <laughs> yeah. right? We had a right. team like Elida 0-4, but they've played a very tough schedule, and they've had some games that maybe they could have gone the other way. Looking at Bluffton, Salina, Ada, Lormie, St. Mary's, all 1-2. and two. Continental and Fort Jennings, 1-3. and three. Specifically with the Bulldogs, they lost the game to Kaleida this weekend in four overtimes, 73 to 70. Yeah, and the interesting thing about that is, you know, you're playing a non-league game and you learn a whole lot about your team. You're playing an extra half of basketball yeah. when you play over four overtimes. And then they came back and won on Saturday night. You know, when you would think that their energy level was down a little bit, just from fatigue factor, they came back and won on Saturday night. That's really good for yeah, them. Yeah, great bounce back win. Any of those teams you're surprised about? Bluffton, Salina? Well... I think if we can talk about somebody who might really improve out of this is St. Mary's because yeah. they have a really good scoring guard uh, in, in Jay, and I think he'll, he'll, he's enough that can carry you through it. But a new coaching staff trying to put things together for them. Conference play is going to begin this week for St. Mary's, so I, I think that's a team that can really grow as the season goes along. Looking at Lima Senior, they've still yet to play a game. Right. We're excited for them to take the court. It will happen tonight. We're taping right. this on Tuesday against Toledo St. John's, and that's, a, that's some opener. I mean, It that's really a, is. I, I'm a little bit surprised, and, and I'm not, I don't want to sound critical, but the Spartans haven't played yet. Now, they played two football games in the postseason, so they've had time to put things together, and now they're going to play Toledo St. John's without a game prior to that. A couple scrimmages in there, but oh, absolutely. it's always and, different, and, and of course. And I know Coach Simpson likes to practice twice a day, to practice before school and after school. His guys will be prepared, but nothing quite prepares you like being on the court and playing in-game situations. So that's a little bit surprising. But then because they're supposed to play Toledo Central Catholic this weekend, who obviously just finished playing football, they don't have a game this weekend either. So they're going to go Tuesday, Tuesday, and start out with a very difficult game uh, t tonight with Toledo St. John's. And then they'll host uh, an, what was supposed to be a tournament will just be a, an interesting weekend at Lima Senior next, the weekend after that. We'll right. deal with that next week. Let's talk right. about this weekend's games right. now. Tell me what you're looking forward to with these league openers. Well, it's really easy to look at Spencerville and Lincoln View. It's at Lincoln View that puts a little bit more pressure on them to win at home. I would can be concerned if you're Spencerville because they don't have Zach Goki, or even if he does play this week, he doesn't have game conditioning yet. I think that's a really good basketball game, a really interesting game to see how much Lincoln View has come up the scale if they can compete with Spencerville this week. Another good looking game in the MAC, St. Henry Minster. That's the season opener for the Wildcats. You also have Versailles, New Knoxville, and the MAC this week. WBO, OG Bath, Shawnee yep. Wapak. You know, they're good right. games all over the place. So th There really are. And this will be the opener, I think, for Wapak. They play Tuesday night as well. Then they have their opener uh, with the league play with yeah. Wapak. And, and I really think that that Bath OG game is interesting. Bath has been here and here. You know, they've got wins, uh, you know, beat Bluffton, they got a win there, they got a win uh, the last uh, against Elida in the tip-off classic. Then they lost to, you know, a couple games, you kind of wonder wh where they were at. They lost to Columbus Grove last weekend in a close shootout game that they were ahead at early in the basketball game. So I'm kind of curious how Bath plays, and particularly at home with OG. Speaking of Bath, to the girls for a minute, big loss for them at Anna on Monday night. And the Wild Kittens, you know, they have this streak, this amazing WBL streak right. that goes back almost over four years. Right. It's going to be tested this Thursday against OG. It really is. I think that proves a little bit how good Anna's ladies basketball team is this year. Both of those teams were undefeated on Monday night when they played Anna with a 22-point win. Huge win at Anna. That, that was very impressive for them. Yeah, this is a bath team which is down a little bit, maybe in talent, but mostly in experience. And so that was an interesting loss. And then a very good game with Ottawa Glandorf this week. I think that's one of the two best teams in the conference, perhaps meeting up again, and we'll see if that streak holds for the Wild Kittens. Looking forward to that one. We'll have highlights on the Sports Report on Thursday. Now, let's get to this weekend's rebroadcast schedule, and it's a good one. It begins Wednesday night, 9.30, Ridgemont versus Ada Boys. And then Friday, two games for you. 10.30, WOSN game is Lipsick versus Arlington in the BVC, and then 1044 immediately following the sports report on WTLW, Salina versus Elida boys. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Saturday, four games begins at 7 p.m. Grove versus Crestview boys, followed by St. Henry Minster, and then 1030 on WOSN, New Knoxville versus Anna, or if you prefer, 1030 WTLW, that good one between OG and LCC. And then Sunday, two more games, Lima Senior versus LCC Girls, the Battle of Lima right. for the ladies. Looking forward to that one. And Finley versus Bath Boys rounds out the rebroadcast schedule Sunday at 830. Well, that's going to do it for this week's Marks Madness. Thanks to Mark Shine as always. We'll be right back here next week and enjoy your games.